Hello my keto peeps, it's Samaya and welcome back to my channel, I Don't Sugarcoat. Today I have a really awesome recipe for you guys and I've been dying to share this one with you. So what are we making today? We are going to be making cinnamon rolls you guys. So let's get started. <music> requested recipe for me to record and make for you guys that and the donut recipe which will be coming up soon too I think I'll be recording that in mm, either the next couple of days or maybe next week it just kind of depends on how my schedule goes but let's get started with this recipe right here you guys okay so this is going to be my um, pizza dough recipe you guys so what we're gonna do is we've got our water right here um, at the right temp which is hundred and thirty degrees Fahrenheit so we're gonna go ahead and pour our water into the mixing bowl and I'm just gonna put my paddle attachment on here Okay, all right, so now that we've got that on there, we're gonna add a table, a half a tablespoon, I should say, half a tablespoon of instant yeast. And to that, we're going to add half a teaspoon of honey, and I'm just gonna eyeball this today. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and give this a quick mix, you guys. Now, if you have seen my pizza dough recipe and you already know how to combine all this stuff together, well, there is a couple of alterations, so you probably don't wanna skip past this because there is a couple of alterations. Okay. And now you guys know what's next. We're gonna add one lightly beaten room temperature egg to the mix. And we're gonna add one tablespoon of softened room temperature butter. one of those alterations we're going to be adding one teaspoon of vanilla Oops. I turned that up too high <laughs> okay sorry if you can hear my dog she guys Okay, so now that that's ready, we're gonna go ahead and get our dry ingredients mixed really quick. In this bowl, I have a half a cup plus one eighth of a cup of vital wheat gluten. Next, we're gonna add a fourth of a cup of oat fiber. Then we're gonna add a third of a cup of lupin flour. And now for another alteration, instead of adding two, tables, two tablespoons of um, confectioner's swerve, we're gonna be adding four tablespoons. And then we're gonna be adding one teaspoon of salt and a fourth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. And 
And now we're just gonna give this a quick mix and then we're gonna pour it all into our wet ingredients over here. Sorry if my eyes look a little swollen to you guys. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is allergy season for me right now. And so my eyes have been itching like mad. I didn't even think I was gonna be able to get my contacts in today. And usually I like to wear colored contacts, you guys, just because I think it's fun. But I don't know, my color contacts tend to fit differently than my clear ones. So I was not able to get those in because of how irritated my eyes was feeling today. So I just had to go with the clear contacts. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and dump all this into the bowl, try not to spill it, and then we're gonna let it mix until it's well combined. Awesome, you guys, I did that without spilling. And go ahead and lock your mixer in place and turn it on. want to go ahead and just scrape the dough off of the paddle and we're going to go ahead and work it into a little ball with our spatula and we're going to change our attachment here to the dough hook attachment and then we're going to go ahead and let that work on kneading this dough for seven minutes. So just get it into just a nice little ball. And we're gonna go ahead and add our dough hook. Okay, lock it in place and go ahead and turn this on to medium and then we're gonna set the timer and let this go for seven minutes. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Actually guys, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get our filling together while this is, um, while this is kneading. So let's get our filling done. softened butter and I know this is not the Kerrygold butter that everyone loves to use on keto but you know what sometimes I can afford to buy it and sometimes I can't so you know when I can do it I do it and if I can't do it I don't and I don't let that stop me from continuing to do keto so Okay, and now we're gonna add three fourths of a cup of um, brown swerve. And then we wanna add three tablespoons of um, cinnamon. And we're gonna mix all of this together. And my butter is really, really softened. I let it sit out since this morning just because I wanted to make it easy to work with. And now you can use a hand mixer if you want, but I've already got enough noise going, so. So 
what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this, I'm gonna get this stuff moved out of the way because we're gonna need to roll our dough. Okay, you guys, so our dough is done. And we're gonna go ahead and get it off of the dough hook. And it will feel a little bit stickier than normal. And that's okay. If your dough is really sticking to your fingers, go ahead and dust some of the um, oak fiber on it. And dust some on your surface too, because we're gonna roll this out. And you wanna dust some onto your rolling pin as well. Okay, so we don't wanna work this dough too much. We just wanna quickly get it rolled out so we can get the um, filling put in it. And we're gonna try to get this rolled out to about, I'd say maybe, um, Oh, I'm gonna go for maybe 12 inches by eight, if I can get it that. And I don't really wanna trim this dough, so I'm gonna try to keep it all together and try to get it just work down and into the right shape without working it too much so these will get a nice good rise on them okay you guys so i've got mine's rolled out to about 11 by 8 and if you can see, I have folded mine over just to try to get those nice straight edges. It may not look the prettiest on the inside right now, but do not worry about that because you're not gonna see this part. So go ahead and start smearing your filling inside here. And make sure to leave about an inch of space left for no filling at all so we can close these off. And as I said, I would not suggest adding all of this because it might be, it might end up being like too much, you know? So I wouldn't add it all. But go ahead and spread it all the way out to the edges. I'm sorry if you guys keep hearing me um, sniffle and stuff. I told you, it's allergy season, so. It can't be helped. And if you can hear my patio door, that's because the wind is really blowing today. Okay, you guys, so I've got about half of it added on top of my dough. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna roll this tightly. Let's just add those little bits. And we want to get these this rolled nice and tight. And so just gently peel it off of your workstation. And just tuck it as you roll it. Trying to keep it all nice and tight and even as it rolls. there's too much pushing out I just like to push it in on those ends right there just push that dough right back inside
Okay, and now to seal it, wash my hands real quick. I'm just gonna use just a little bit of an egg wash just to seal this dough. Just a little, not much. And then I'm gonna tuck that in. Okay, and so now that I've got my dough, All nice and rolled. Okay, you guys, so now that the dough is all nice and rolled up, it's all nice and closed on the seams, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this dough into nines. Now you can cut yours into um, 12 if you like, but I want mine to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this dough into thirds and then I'm gonna cut it into nine pieces afterwards. Okay, so go ahead and cut your dough. Either you're cutting it into fours or you're cutting it into three like mine. And now go ahead and just make the marks for your next cut. And then get those cut and be careful because we don't want to mess this up the dough is very very delicate so try not to squeeze your cinnamon rolls really when you're cutting them And they smell so good, you guys. They really do. Okay. So I've got a greased eight by eight pan here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding them to the pan. Let's see. Let's get some stuff move out the way. We'll just go ahead and reshape them a little bit to make them nice perfect little circles can you see that okay and I like to have the seams pressing against the outer part right there just to make sure they stay closed you guys they really do and now so for this middle piece just try to point this point the seam towards the one above it so that way when it starts to expand it'll end up touching that part and then it'll keep the seam nice and closed like we want All right, you guys. So they're all nice and beautifully in our pan. And now it's time to let these babies rise. And so I've got something really awesome that I wanna share with you guys. So let's go ahead and get this covered with a strip of um, saran wrap that has been sprayed with some um, oil. I've got mine's right here. I just want to gently lay that over there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, clean up my surface, and move things out the way because I have something really awesome I want to show you guys, and then 
we will, you know, get these things rising. Okay, you guys? So, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, you guys. So, as you can see, I've got a nifty new uh, kitchen gadget that I am so in love with, you guys. Okay, some of you might already know what this is and some of you might not. So, for those of you who don't know what this is, this, my friends, is a bread proofing box. I am in love with this thing. I bought this because I was um, thinking that my sourdough that I was working on might need some help. And also because I do a lot of baking. So sometimes I get hot when I'm cooking and I need my air on, which makes my kitchen much cooler, which is not conducive to bread rising. And so sometimes I have to put the bread in the microwave, but then I've got quite a few people in my family who want to use the microwave conveniently when I'm using it to rise bread dough. And so I was like, you know what, I need a solution. So I found this little baby right here on Amazon and she goes for about $180. Now that's a little bit expensive, I know, but I love this because it gives me a consistent rise on any breads I'm making. So. I really love this box. I'm glad I invested in this box. Truthfully, I wish I had enough space in my house for one of those commercial size ones so I can just rise a bunch of different types of bread all at once, but you know, that's just a fantasy. I'm not gonna be able to get one of those, like who would have one of those in their home anyway? But I'm really glad I found this thing. I would really recommend you guys try this out if you can. If you do a lot of baking with your keto, I totally recommend this for you. So this is one of my new favorite items. Like it's going to be one of the things that I talk to you guys about as far as like um, product recommendations. This thing right here. So I can't go into a bunch of details about it right now, but later we'll definitely get into the specs of this thing. So we're gonna take our cinnamon rolls. Now, you don't have to have one of these, obviously, because you've seen me rise bread dough without it, but I'm gonna be using this. So I have not done cinnamon rolls in this yet. Um, I have the temperature set, if you can see that, to 78 degrees. And so I'm gonna be putting this inside. Um, first, let me show you what's in here. This just comes right off you guys this whole thing is foldable and you can just store it away okay so there is a rack inside here that you're gonna sit your breads on and then there's this little tray for water and what you want to do is you want to let your box heat up for about 30 minutes and it's already been doing that that tray was kind of warm just now when I touched it so you want to put a little bit of water in there just so you can make the atmosphere inside here humid and now put your rack back inside. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my cinnamon rolls in. And I'm gonna leave these in here for about an hour to an hour and 30 minutes. Um, I'm not sure what time is gonna work best because I've never done it in this before. So if you are doing these, um, uh, if you're going to be doing a rise just sitting at room temperature, um, I think it's going to be about an hour and a half for them to rise and you want them to rise until they're nice and fully expanded and touching each other. So if you cut them into 12, you want them to have doubled in size, at least doubled. But if they got just a little bit bigger than that, that's totally fine. But you want them to have gotten bigger to more than likely they should be touching depending on what size pan you're using. So I'm gonna wait for these to double in size to be touching and hopefully it won't take longer than an hour and a half. It shouldn't, this thing rises bread pretty fast you guys because it keeps the temperature consistent now if your kitchen is a little too cold right now to do room temperature go ahead and get a glass of hot water stick it in your microwave and heat it for one minute and then once that's done go ahead and take your cinnamon roll set it in your microwave with the water still in it and you're gonna go ahead and let your dough rise in the microwave in the nice humid area, I mean, humid space that you have created for it. 
So check on it after about an hour and see how much rise you've gotten. And if it's not ready in an hour, come back after an hour and 30 minutes and see where it's at. And if you still need a little more time, then give it a little more time. I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how long mine took when we come back. And so I will just see you guys in a little bit, okay? All right, so mine are out of the um, bread proofer and they sat in there for an hour and they've risen to about this size and I'm happy with this size for the size of the pan that I'm using. Now, if I was using a nine by 12 and I cut these into 12, then I would probably leave that in there a little bit longer because I would want all of them touching. But as you can see, all of mine are touching and they smell so delicious, you guys. I am so serious. They smell so freaking good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put these in the oven that's been preheating at 350 and we're gonna put them in for probably mm, I'd say 12 to 15 minutes so let's check them at about eight minutes and see what they're looking like and then if they're looking really golden already go ahead and put some aluminum foil over the top just lay the sheet on there <sighs> Just lay the sheet on there. You don't have to tuck it or anything because we're not trying to steam these. We just want it to stop browning. So check them at about eight minutes and see how they're doing. And I think mines will probably come out somewhere between 10 and 11 minutes. Um, I've never done them by nines, so I'm not certain how long it's gonna take these to cook. But I will let you know the difference if, there, if there's a difference in time. So let's go ahead and put these in the oven. And then while that's cooking, we're gonna make our icing for them. Okay guys, so now in this bowl, I have three ounces of cream cheese. I also have three tablespoons of butter, one cup of confectioner swerve, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, you can fancy your icing up however you like. You can add some orange flavor to it, or if you want, you can add like maybe um, a little, um, almond extract to it whatever you want however you want these to taste you can dress it up however you like me i'm just going with the plain icing today sometimes i like to do a brown butter icing but i don't want to get too fancy today today i'm just going to keep it simple so let's go ahead and whisk this up until it's nice and creamy Okay, you guys, use a much deeper bowl than I am. Normally, I use my stand mixer, but the bowl is in the dishwasher right now, and I just really didn't feel like having to deal with all of that. But as I was mixing this, it was like splashing out everywhere. So use a much deeper bowl if you're gonna be using a hand whisk. Okay, you guys, so go ahead and scrape your bowl and pull your icing all down to the bottom and see if it looks like it's nice and well mixed. If it's not, then go ahead and give it another mix. Now, you can use as much sweetener as you like. Um, if you use less, I would suggest you adjusting the amount of butter and um, cream cheese that you use 
because you don't want it you want the consistency to be just right so make this icing however sweet you want it to be so I think mine's is good it's nice and thick it's gonna go on nice and thick which is what I want sometimes I like mine with a little bit more of a running ice a runny <laughs> a runny icing and sometimes I like it with the more thick icing so today I'm going thick okay so now that this is done we're gonna set this aside and we are gonna wait until our cinnamon rolls are done and when we come back we're gonna get them iced and we're gonna see what they look like you guys and I'm telling you they're gonna look fantastic you are going to love them so I can't wait till they come out all right I'll see you guys in a bit all right guys so they are out of the oven and I have iced them and plated them and I would have showed you what they looked like coming out of the oven but I wanted to hurry up and try to get them iced and plated um, before they cool too much so they looked fantastic though you guys you have to trust me on that they looked fabulous they were all nice and golden and puffy and oh my god you guys they're so pillowy soft you guys i'm so serious can you see this look at them can you get a good look at those oh my goodness so i really shouldn't try one of these right now because i have not had my dinner yet i don't want to spoil my dinner but i really want to taste one of these for you guys so i am going to pick one of these little smaller ones up right here oh my goodness you guys like can you see that oh look at that it is so amazing look at that look at that dough okay let me try one of these You guys that is so amazing can you see the dough it's so pillowy soft you guys I hope you guys can see that I hope that it's focusing on that because it is so pillowy soft and so delicious like seriously like I totally just want to eat this thing but I, I can't like I'm going to have one for dessert with my dinner, but I can't. Oh my God, I want to eat that so bad, you guys. Um, I will say this. Um, I probably should have used a little less sweetener. I know I try to keep this consistency of my icing pretty thick sometimes. And sometimes you can go a little overboard, especially with the confectioner swirl. So I would suggest adding probably a fourth of a cup less to it. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because I just don't want it that sweet, but I'll let you judge how sweet you want your icing. Me personally, the older I get, the less I like things really sweet. If I was younger, this totally would have been my thing. But now that I'm a little older, I want it a little less sweet. So I will let you judge how much sweetener you use. But if you're trying to go based off the recipe that I've made today, use a, use a fourth less of the sweetener. Go down to three fourths of a cup or maybe even two thirds. You know what? Two thirds will probably be best. Two thirds of a cup of sweetener will probably be the best for this icing but as I said I will leave it up to you and your personal taste buds because you're the one that's got to eat it <laughs> okay so let me give you the nutritional facts for these now if you can see back here I did not use all this icing either like I still have quite a bit of icing left and I'm actually gonna save it because I also have some of the filling left I only used about half of the filling so I'm gonna save it and I'll make another batch for my kids um, maybe a couple days from now. 
So I'm gonna save this and put this away. But I am gonna give you the nutritional facts for the recipe as is. Now, if you use less of the icing, then just go ahead and make those adjustments of how much you think you used. But truthfully, I think I only used like a third but I did do nine, so it might come out to a little bit more icing than that. But I think I only used a third of that icing. So, the recipe as it stands right now, if you make 12, because today I made nine because I wanted them a little bigger. And trust me, if you make 12 with this, they will still get this size like this big you guys they'll still get big like this because you're putting them in a bigger pan giving it more room to rise I used a much smaller pan it didn't have as much room to expand but if you use a 9 by 12 you will totally get um, cinnamon rolls regular size so don't even worry about it um, I'm giving you the nutritional facts for 12 rolls because that's what I usually make with this recipe today I just happen to make nine okay so for 12 rolls it will be one net carb for each roll it will be 7.2 grams of protein and 7 grams of fat for each roll you guys that's a delicious treat right there, you guys. If you make 12 of these and you wanna do this for breakfast, you can totally have two of these rolls and not break the, um, the carb bake. You won't break the carb bake. You will only get to 2.4 carbs for two of these delicious things. And you can have it at breakfast or you can have it as a snack, whatever you wanna do with it. So. That's gonna be it for today, guys. I hope you really appreciated this video because so many of you guys were asking for it and I'm sorry it took me so long to do it. So I hope you guys really, really love this video. Um, oh, it only took mine um, 11 minutes to cook. So mine's cooked for 11 minutes. And I did end up putting a strip of aluminum foil over it at the eight minute mark because they were getting all nice and golden and brown. So I did put a strip of aluminum foil on there to let it finish the remaining, the remaining three minutes. So I think that's gonna be it guys. And uh, I will leave the ingredients for this in the description of the video. So if you like this video, and hopefully you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell so you can get notifications every time I put out a new video. And I think that's going to be it for today. So until next time, you guys, bye.